Congresswoman Maxine Waters has been missing from virtually all mainstream media platforms for the last several years because every time they invite her on for an interview, she embarrasses not only herself, but the entire Democrat Party. But somebody did invite her on a podcast, and apparently her great-great-grandchildren set up Zoom for her and helped her log on, where she made a very interesting revelation. As a member of Congress with people, you know, who evidently had a racist attitude uh, Mm -hmm. and recently one even confronted me in a restaurant and they don't say racist things. But what they say is uh, they don't like something I said. They don't (laughs) like a position that I took. Uh, But, you know, that, you know, if you were not black. Right. Uh, you would not be approached that right. way. Right. They probably would not. Right. They no. would think twice about doing it. They think That's that right. they can get away with right. doing it with, with you and that you're right. flat. They had a racist attitude, but they didn't say anything racist. But just disagreeing with the black politicians' policies is racist. Perhaps the only way to get the Democrats to back off from their insanity is to give them a taste of their own medicine. And this is exactly what Maxine prescribed. Let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Republicans aren't allowed in America anymore, anywhere, she said. And she doubled and tripled down on the stance. This wasn't just something she said in the heat of the moment. She would repeat it later on MSNBC and other outlets. These members of his cabinet who remain and try to defend him, they're not going to be able to go to a restaurant. They're not going to be able to stop at a gas station. They're not going to be able to shop at a department store. The people are going to turn on them. They're going to protest. They're going to uh, absolutely harass them until they decide that they're going to tell the president, no, I can't hang with you. Well, that was what she said then. But little did she know that her comments would soon come back to bite her in the form of Laura Loomer confronting her face to face who is definitely someone you don't want to be on the bad side of as a politician because she'll do this to you you just recently made some comments in which you encourage uh, who are your you? support who are you about darling my who name is you? laura loomer i'm a trump supporter and i'm also okay, okay, a conservative okay. journalist come to my office i'll be happy to sit down with you no, we I, can't I talk would like to ask you questions we please don't talk. please don't push my camera out of my no, hands you just you just encourage your please supporters to my office you just encourage your supporters to harass <laughs> trump supporters <laughs> and Officials. Please come to my office. I just wanted to ask you, where where are conservatives allowed to go? Please come are there to my separate? And talk with me. Do we sit at the back of the bus? Where can we eat? Happy to talk. Where can a conservative <laughs> eat at a restaurant please in DC? Please come to my office and talk. I'm and asking you right now. Please come to my this office and talk. With You're talking about civility. Do you think it's civil to call for the please harassment come to of my Trump office and sit down? And no, talk. I'm asking you right now. Oh, will you please come to my office? Are we supposed to sit at the back of the bus? Are we supposed to sit at the back of the bus? This elevator is members only. It's a members elevator. Ma'am, it's a members elevator. Ma'am, it's a ma'am. Ma'am, it's a members elevator. Now she's happy. Now she's got her staff there to protect her. She knows that the confrontation is going to end in just a few seconds, but she was absolutely spooked. We have a lot of great friends and a lot of great people. Laura, how are you? You look so beautiful, as always. That's a woman with courage. You don't want to be, you don't want to be loomered. If you're loomered, you're in deep trouble. That's the end of your career, in a sense. Thanks, Rose. Getting loomered is what she calls confronting the politicians. And her tactics are, let's just say, uh, unconventional sometimes, like when she handcuffed herself to the front door of Twitter's headquarters after she was banned for insulting Elon Omar. Or like the time she brought some migrants to Nancy Pelosi's house, since Nancy Pelosi declares California to be a sanctuary state. Loomer just figured that her front yard would be a sanctuary, too. Surprise, surprise, guess where I am? I am on Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's front lawn here in Sanctuary State, California. I'm being banned everywhere, so I really needed a sanctuary, and I just felt like since 
you know, Nancy Pelosi has said that everyone is welcome here, that I would really be welcome here on her front lawn here in California. So well, this is private property, so. I'm confused. I thought that California was a sanctuary state. I'm really confused. Nancy said everyone was welcome here. Oh, and speaking of the invasion through the southern border, here's old Joe revealing the latest updates on the demographic changes to what was once the United States of America. Roughly 25 students from K through 12 out of every single class, 25 out of 100 students, are come from Spanish-speaking homes. How in God's name can we ignore that? It's our future. It's our future. Especially in school districts like California and Texas. And Across the board, even my state of Delaware. So 25% of the children in public schools now in the United States are anchor babies or criminal invaders themselves who were smuggled over with their criminal invader parents. And that's our future, old Joe says, living in a country where quarter of the people living around here don't even speak our language. As the great paleoconservative, real conservative, Pat Buchanan wrote in his 2002 book, The Death of the West, uncontrolled immigration threatens to deconstruct the nation we grew up in and convert America into a conglomerate of people with almost nothing in common. No history, heroes, language, culture, faith, or ancestors. He goes on to say millions have no desire to learn English or become citizens. America is not their home. Mexico is, in countless other countries down in Central America, and they wish to remain proud Mexicans. They have come here to work, he said. Now, this is over 20 years ago when they actually did come here to work. Now, they're just coming for free stuff. Rather than assimilate, they create little Tijuanas in U.S. cities, just as Cubans have created little Havana in Miami. With their own radio and TV stations, newspapers, films, and magazines, the Mexican-Americans are creating a Hispanic culture separate and apart from America's large culture. They are becoming a nation within a nation. Of course, the same thing is happening over in Europe. It's all part of a plan you're not supposed to talk about. But occasionally, sometimes people just can't help but air their grievances about the situation that they find themselves in, like this newscaster over there in England. Such an important issue for me because I've been living in London for 10 years. I've also lived in multiple other countries around the world. Never before have I felt as unsafe as I do now. When I walk down the street, I'm increasingly being leered at. I'm increasingly having... I'm increasingly being followed like I'm going around the souks of Morocco. And it's not visibly to me anyway, people who were born and bred here. It's not white people. Of course not. It isn't. And I, I, you know, it's very difficult because we're not allowed to talk about it because, oh, my gosh, you know, that's not that breaks taboo. Oh, you know, you're a racist if you say this. I'm sorry. A lot of women going about their daily business feel that their safety is being directly threatened by people who are coming from different cultures. And this needs to be discussed because I've had enough. All my other female friends have had enough. When I put this stuff online, the number of comments online from other women saying they've had enough and saying thank you for talking about this. Which reminds me of this interesting factoid from USA Today where they compiled a list of the best and worst things about all 50 states. And in Maine, they found that the best thing was that it had the lowest crime rate of all 50 states. Ranks the safest state in the country. The worst thing they said, however, can you guess? <laughs> I'll give you one guess. The worst thing that it, it's the least diverse According to the latest census data, 94.4% of Maine's population is white. But we're in an era where noticing patterns will get you called a racist or an anti-Semite. So this interesting factoid is presented without comment. So is this embarrassing clip from MSNBC where they interviewed a bunch of undecided voters. And, well... Things didn't go exactly as they had hoped. Undecided voters were also asked how they think President Biden is doing on the economy. Take a listen. I think he's been absolutely disastrous for the economy. Mm -hmm. I agree. So raise your hand if you think President Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Raise your hand. All right. So that is everybody. <laughs> But a certain and sizable demographic in America will never be happy with enough free stuff that they get from the government. So Democrat Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett from Texas 
is proposing that instead of paying black people reparations, which, of course, we already have in the form of welfare and countless other social programs that we've been paying for generations and generations to try to make them happy. She is proposing that instead of just giving them free money in the form of reparations, because, well, most Americans roll their eyes and ridicule anybody who takes that proposal seriously. She is recommending instead that black people just don't pay taxes. Just this past week, I saw I don't remember which celebrity, but it was actually a celebrity. And I was like, I don't know. That that's not necessarily a bad idea. Well, celebrities know what's best. <laughs> But I'd have to think through it a lot. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes for a certain amount of time, because then again, that puts money back in your pocket. But at the same time, it may not be as objectionable to some people about actually giving out dollars. Yeah. But obviously, then you start dealing with the different tax brackets and things like that. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we they still want the free money because many black people don't pay any money in taxes. This woman may be like the millennial Maxine Waters, who for some reason there are enough morons in her district to keep voting her into office. And what better place to get your ideas for new legislation than from celebrities? And there is a Celebrities Know What's Best shirt in my online store at markdice.com. And I did finally add a couple new colors for the Christ is King shirt. So it's now available in black, white, two different blues, and a red. So again, that is available at markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.